What I wanted to talk to you about is a phrase that we hear in the church quite often, and that is that someone is claiming God's promises. Okay, so someone says, I'm claiming the promises of God for this or this or this. Okay, and I wanted to ask the question, is that appropriate to do when it comes to business endeavors? Live your faith, build your business and change your world. This is Live, Build, Change. Is claiming promises of God that seem to speak to prosperity or God multiplying your goods or things like that, are those appropriate to apply in a business context? So that's really the question. But I think in order to effectively answer it, we have to back up a little bit and ask, first of all, what do we mean when we say we're claiming God's promises? I think it's important that we have all of our thinking on the same page in that regard. Now, I've seen this practice done a couple of different ways throughout the 20 years I was a pastor and also just in my life as a believer with people I rub shoulders with. There is a right way and a wrong way to do this, I think, from what I've learned of scripture and what I have seen people practice. Let me give you a couple of scenarios. You have somebody who is struggling to put food on the table. They don't have a job. They're not actively looking for a job. They, in fact, are just praying and hoping that something is going to come through for them. And they say things like, I am claiming the promises of God that he doesn't let the righteous go forsaken. Well, I think it's probably pretty obvious, at least I hope it is, that that's not really a very wise or appropriate way to, quote unquote, claim the promises of God. God's promises are not isolated. When God makes a promise to the righteous, he's making a promise to a person who has certain characteristics and certain things true about them. That's what he means when he says the righteous. And all of that is righteousness that comes to us through Christ. And it includes having Christ himself in us, who strengthens us, fills us with wisdom and motivates us to go and do what we need to do to be a part of God's promises coming true. We are often the means God uses to fulfill his promises to us. So we can't just claim promises of things God said in scripture. If we are either unable or unwilling to step into the situation by faith, trusting God is going to help us and actually put our faith into action. I think that's a wrong way to apply this idea of claiming God's promises. So what would the right way look like? Well, the right way is really what all the rest of this episode is about. Because claiming the promises of God really has more to do with your relationship with God than it does taking a black and white phrase out of scripture and applying it to your situation. Let me explain to you what I mean. You know, in scripture, there are some keystone kind of verses, verses that lots of other theology or lots of other belief rest upon. And it's it's foundational. It's an idea that is a truth that supports everything else. One of those, I believe, that's often overlooked in this regard and often is even misapplied in this kind of thing is Psalm chapter 37, verse number four. Now, I know on previous episodes, I have talked about Psalm 37, four. But here is what Psalm 37, 4 says. It says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, as we stop and we think about that, it could be taken one of two ways. It could mean if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you everything you want. And so the desires of your heart is being defined as everything you want. I don't think that's what the verse is saying. The verse is an if-then statement. So the last part of it, that desires of your heart part, is contingent on the first part. And in order for us to understand the verse, we have to understand what that first part really means. Okay, so delight yourself in the Lord. You see, that's a statement about relationship. 
It's a statement about our affections being directed toward God intentionally, I might add. You see, we have a responsibility as followers of Jesus Christ to orient our mind, to orient our hearts toward God as our highest treasure. You see, that's what worship really is. That's what being a Christ follower is literally about. It's about being so enraptured and consumed with who our God is, who our Savior Jesus Christ is, that we delight in Him like we would delight in our spouse or like we would delight in our children, like we would delight in some favorite hobby or favorite activity that we have. You see, that idea of delighting in God is really the key part of this verse. And when that is in place, then we have a context in which we can understand the next part of the verse. It says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. After understanding the conditional nature of this statement, what I think it means is, as you delight in God, in who he is, in what he's about in history, and in this world, in this universe, as you delight in that, you take delight in it. And you make him your highest objective, your highest goal, your highest desire. Then he gives to you the desires your heart is intended to have. Does that make sense? So he is fashioning your desires. He's creating them for you. And it flows out of the fact that your perspective and your focus is correct. You are looking at the God of history, the one who holds history in his hand and who is bringing about all things according to the counsel of his will. And so it only makes sense that the desires that start welling up inside of you and the things that you want to do in the world will be more on track with what he wants because you're staying aligned with him personally. You know, this is really what the morning mindset edition of the Live, Build, Change podcast is really all about. It's helping you get your mind aligned so that you can delight in the Lord every day and then be aware of those desires that he places on your heart and be able to act on them. Okay, so there's the foundational work that comes from Psalm 37, 4. So let's go back to our original question. Is it appropriate to, quote unquote, claim the promises of God in relationship to business? Well, if claiming the promises of God is flowing out of that deep, passionate, Christ-honoring, Christ-seeking relationship that you are establishing in the first part of Psalm 37, 4, then I would expect that I will start having desires. I will start having goals. I will start having ambitions that are flowing out of that relationship. And as I come across passages of scripture that speak to those kinds of things in either specific or general ways, I have more cause to take those as promises applied to me and to my situation. And I think as I'm walking close to God in that delighting myself in the Lord kind of way, I begin to have a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit that tells me whether or not I am able to take that particular promise or that particular passage of scripture in the truth it communicates and apply it directly to my situation. You see, this is not an exact science because it's not science at all. This is faith. This is how we, on a very personal, individual level, relate with the God of the universe. And as we are tight with him, we are growing with him, he reveals to us where we should be headed. And part of that will be him revealing to us things he has said in his word that can give us confidence as we head in that direction. So, can you claim the promises of God as it relates to your business? Well, my only caveat would be, if you are doing your diligent best to delight in the Lord, to carry out that relationship with Him in an authentic, genuine, passionate way, you can be more confident that the promises of God you come across in Scripture will, first of all, be discerned rightly by you and understood well. Secondly, you will take the context into account and you will see what God really meant in the broader scheme of what he wrote in that particular passage. But then the Holy Spirit, who is the author of scripture, may actually 
tap you on the shoulder or tug at your heart and say to you in that inaudible, intangible, small, still voice kind of a way, this is for you. I want you to pursue what I want for you, what I've placed on your heart with this kind of confidence that this promise communicates to you. That's my perspective on what it means to claim a promise of God, how you can do so legitimately, and then how you can confidently take action on that. Now, I want to wrap up by telling you a recent story in my situation of what this kind of promise claiming faith might look like. And I only tell you my story because it's the only story I have. It's my experience in applying this kind of a truth as I've worked on my business. It's not to brag. It's not to boast. It's not to say anything about myself other than to say, this is how God has taught me. So here's the situation. I have communicated very clearly on this podcast. You can go back to episode zero if you want to hear my story. A link to it will be in the description portion on your podcast app or in the show notes. And you can find it at livebuildchange.com slash zero. But my passion, my desire, my purpose in this business that God has given me is to build a business that fuels more than just my life, fuels more than my lifestyle. Some of the ways that has manifested itself is in supporting a team of 11 people, at least part-time in some cases and full-time in other cases. That has really taken me by surprise. I've been pleasantly surprised with how exciting it is to me to be able to offer an opportunity of employment of a sort to people who need it, to people who have young families, to fellow believers, to others who are in need of that kind of provision. That just really gets me excited that I am able to provide that. There are other things I'm seeking to do with this business. I'm seeking to fund causes that I care about. You can see on the why page of my business, podcastfasttrack.com slash why, we are already supporting a ministry called Hope India Mission, which really makes me excited because they are doing incredible things over in India in evangelism and Christian schools and orphanages and church planting and all kinds of things like that. Things that really motivate me to build this business bigger. Well, all that's just background to say this. What does promise claiming faith look like in that context? Well, here's what it looks like most recently. I have that gut level belief that God is using this business to do those kinds of things that I just described to you. It's a deep, firm conviction. I believe God is going to flourish this business because it's what he's placed on my heart as I've walked close to him. And I see things in the scripture where God flourishes the work of the righteous, like he did in Daniel's life or in Joseph's life. And I started thinking about my business and the hard work that goes into creating a business, marketing, sales, establishing a good service, working with a team. It's all very hard work. And I got this thought a few months ago that if God is working alongside me, as I believe he is, what kind of action will I be taking or how will my action I am taking be different? If I really believe that. And what I came to the conclusion of was I would be going for it. I would be excited because I believe God has promised me he's going to flourish this. I believe the work of my hands is going to prosper. I believe that what I'm doing is going to succeed because it has a deeper purpose behind it. And a, the God of the universe who is adding his blessing to it and is bringing just the right people. And so I pray as I market. I pray as I respond to people via email. I pray as I speak to them on the phone that God will guide me to exactly the right clients who will flourish this business. And in turn, we flourish what they are doing. And I act with boldness and with confidence in those conversations. Now, it's not always easy. It's not always comfortable. It's not always natural. Yet, that's what faith looks like when you really are claiming a promise of God that you are convinced he has given to you. You act with boldness. You act with faith. You act with confidence, not because you are anything. You see, I don't think I'm the greatest businessman. I'm really not a very good salesperson. 
And I'm definitely not the best marketer out there. But here's where my faith lies. I believe my God is at work in this business. And he has made a promise that he intends to keep. And my role is like a little kid at Christmas. I'm just excited to see what he's going to do. And I want to be a part of it. I want to get involved. I want to do the things that bring it about because then I can be encouraged that my faith in God is actually on track. I'm hearing from him. I'm pursuing the things that matter, the things he's placed on my heart. And this business is not about me. It's about him. It's about his glory and purposes that he has established for it long, long ago. I hope that makes sense to you. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this. If you're listening to this on a podcast app, you can reach out to me at carry at livebuildchange.com. Or if you're seeing this on social media, respond in the comments. I would love to interact with you about this idea of claiming the promises of God for your business. Thanks so much for listening to Live, Build, Change. I so appreciate it. And if you are finding value in these episodes, there is one very important way you could help me out. And that is by passing these episodes along to one person or two people that you know would benefit from what you're hearing here on the episodes. You can do that by swiping right or left on the app that you're using to listen to this episode. Or if you're on iTunes or on the website, there are sharing buttons there where you can share this episode directly with someone via email or text. And please include a personal note because it makes so much more difference when someone hears from someone they know. And here's the recommendation of why the episode would be beneficial. You can make a difference in the lives of others by helping them find out more about Live, Build, Change. Thanks so much.